Red means go. We're going to go. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all here. Uh, title of this is Less is More, Adventures in Text-Only Drupal, and I'm your host, Les Lim. Uh, so, uh, for thematic reasons, this slide deck is also going to be a text-only. It has nothing to do with me uh, running out of time making my slides last night. <laughs> so, I am Les Lim. I am a web developer at Human Rights Watch. Uh, we're a uh, large non-governmental organization. We investigate uh, uh, rights abuses around the world and report on them, uh, holding truth, holding uh, truth, uh, uh, holding holding people's feet to the fire. Uh, I have been a former Twin Cities Drupal Camp organizer, and I've been in the Drupal community here since 2008. And I built, uh, if I can go over here and look over at the screen here, I helped build this website. This is Human Rights Watch. Uh, this is the front page of Human Rights Watch. We're a very news-oriented site. Uh, the front page has featured news stories that we we're working on for, uh, for the week, and then there's a river of news that's very much uh, oriented first and foremost toward our reporting. And so we think of ourselves primarily as a reporting organization as far as the website is concerned. Uh, we built recently this over here. This is the text-only version of the website. It's stripped clear of anything that's image-related. It's stripped clear of most of the JavaScript. It focuses on the stories that are available, uh, the same stories that are available on the front page with a full sort of experience, the full sort of navigation that you would get on the website. Um, and it has all of the languages that the main website is available in. Uh, so I can go through to anything that we've 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 built for for the main website is available on this uh, text only website as well. At the article level, we have again text only with the ability to go to the full version if we want to, or to switch between different language versions of the particular article that we're looking at. We can also uh, choose to load in whatever media is available on the website. I can click this button to load the image, and uh, the image is already present on the page. When I click this button, it lazy loads the image in place so that on the initial page load, the weight of this, of this image isn't part of that initial payload. Uh, but I can choose to enhance my, uh, my browsing experience as I go through. Uh, we can, uh, when, there are, when there are embedded things like YouTube videos, we can choose to watch those. Uh, there's no way I can reduce the size of the YouTube video, but at least you have some warning before you go and watch that on YouTube. Where available, we don't also have, such as on our full reports, wherever we have text descriptions of a video available, I can choose to load in the text description of the video as an alternative to watching the YouTube video. Uh, and, and so get the sort of the, the text alternative experience loaded in as well. So we're leaning heavily into the things that we're already doing for accessibility on, uh, on the site. Um, so why do we do this? Uh, this... Uh, this project has its start in my very first month at Human Rights Watch, a little uh, earlier into last year, when uh, we were experiencing a hit in our search engine optimization. And the first thing that we looked at is our, our Google PageSpeed Insights. And the, if you don't know the Google PageSpeed uh, the Insights tool, that's, uh, that's, a Google, that's a tool that Google has that profiles a web page. It helps you calculate your speed and experience metrics into a single score. If anybody's heard of Core Web Vitals, uh, the PageSpeed Insights tool is, is there to help uh, calculate your core web vitals. And uh, the very first time I loaded this up, we were getting abysmal scores. Like, uh, our scores were, uh, on a scale of 0 to 100, we were seeing like 29, 30. Uh, and as a web developer, you're just looking at the list of all the things that like, Google says you're doing wrong, and these are the moments that, that make you die a little bit inside. Uh, so. You know, I'm going down and I'm saying, oh wow, the, the, there's, there's layout shifts, there's a whole bunch of JavaScript that's being loaded, there's like major, like, like the, the main thread takes like 10 seconds to, to load, there's like 2,000 different nodes being loaded in this page, and I'm like, you know, this would be so much easier if we could just get rid of all the JavaScript and get rid of all the images. Then our page doors will way up. If we could just get rid of everything on the page that made the page what it is, then uh, my job would be so much easier. And right around then, a light bulb just went bing. And I thought, why couldn't we do that? Why couldn't we just have that experience for people who want it? Uh, and so we started thinking about that early on as a possible, not solution, but a possible alternative experience to browsing the site. Uh, and we stood on that for about a year and uh, recently just got the chance to, to put that into motion. Um, but what else? Like, What are the other reasons why this is, uh, this is helpful for us? Uh, at Human Rights Watch, we, uh, we would like to be able to reach audiences that perhaps wouldn't necessarily be able to experience 
our reporting in the way that we want them to because of limitations on their technology or limitations on uh, what their capacity is. And uh, so that, that includes things like slow internet connections, We're talking about 2G, 3G, satellite connections, particularly in parts of the Middle East or North Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa, the coverage for 4G networks and above can be a little lower. In Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, I think that only um, just a little over half of the population has access to 4G or better coverage. Um, and the coverage that often is available is, uh, is overloaded and has high latency. So anything we can do for people in those areas that reduces the amount of bandwidth they're using, the amount of, uh, the amount of round trips to a server they're using to, to uh, render a web page, uh, the better. Another possible reason that we would be, uh, why well, this is helpful for us is that a lot of populations around the world use older smartphones. Uh, we, we don't have the, the newest uh, iPhone 14 Pixel you know, 64 Pro options that are available. A, a lot of the time, uh, people are using uh, secondhand or thirdhand phones that have been on the, the secondhand market. And these are, uh, these are still perfectly good phones. They're, they're perfectly fine for browsing the internet. But uh, they, uh, the, more, the more time in CPU that you are forcing a phone to use to evaluate JavaScript and draw the page, the, the slower their experience is and the more likely it is that you might just experience a, a crash. The, the phone might not be able to even, even uh, uh, render it at all. And we're approaching a point where in, the, in the internet where the median web page across the entire internet is over two megabytes. Uh, if you load the front page of Human Rights Watch, uh, and you scroll to the bottom of the page, loading all of the lazy loaded resources. We were approaching two megabytes. We're at like 1.9 megabytes, I think. And so um, we, we'd like to be able to cut that down, that payload, the initial payload down, as much as possible. Um, the other thing uh, that, that is important is uh, data caps. A lot of the world still operates not on unlimited data plans, but where you're buying things sort of a la carte, gigabytes at a time. And uh, in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, a, a one gigabyte of data is about 3.4% of the monthly GDP per capita. So, you know, that adds up over time. 3.4% is nothing to, to shake a stick at. Uh, the, the less data that we can force people to use, the better. Um, there's also the accessibility reasons. Uh, the the text-only website, to my mind at least, has clearer presentation of your information and relationships. It's much easier to see, uh, you know, what the main content of a page is. There's no, like, sidebars of information that's showing you um, related content or other things that you might be interested in looking at. Uh, that equals a lower cognitive load. It's easier to get to the point and the crux of what you're, what you're looking for um, and, uh, and easier to start reading the content. And uh, I, I want to uh, sort of uh, emphasize that this is not meant to be the accessible option. Like, it, it's very useful to be able to have an alternative browsing experience that can be uh, more accessible and can be uh, 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 useful for people who, who want that experience, but that's not uh, in, in lieu of making your main site accessible. And that's been a, a focus of ours over the last few years as well, making sure that the, the main website is accessible. But this, as an alternative experience, uh, is something that we'd like to offer. Um, we drew our inspirations from a couple different sources. We're not the first ones to do this by any means. NPR uh, has a text-only version of their website, so does CNN. Theirs are, uh, they're also news organizations. They, they have uh, text-only websites that I can actually show you, I think. I've got those loaded up here in these tabs. Here's NPR's. Uh, looks very similar to ours, uh, like a river of, of, uh, of headlines. Uh, and then uh, just like some, some basic navigation at the bottom of the page. Uh, but same idea, stripped down to just the text um, with related stories uh, interspersed throughout there. CNN has a very similar experience where it's uh, you know, a river of reverse chronological news stories. Uh, and that's it. There's not even any uh, other navigation. This is what you get if you want to search the, the website for any, any material. You can't really do that. You just get the most recent up-to-date things, which is maybe fine for organizations like NPR and CNN, which, you know, they, they travel in or they, they trade in, in the most recent breaking topics. Um, but we wanted to be able to, uh, to have an experience where you could uh, go through the backlogs. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of challenges in human rights aren't resolved on a day-to-day on -day basis. There's a backlog of, of content that's, that's hugely relevant. So we, uh, we wanted the ability for you to go through to, uh, I'm still on the French version here, to look at, uh, to browse our site according to uh, the, the various uh, topics that we have. Switch over to English here. Uh, to uh, be able to, to go and browse for uh, the particular country that you're looking for and see the news that's relevant to the region or country 
that you might be living in or interested in. Uh, it was important to us to have uh, a search functionality that uh, doesn't necessarily have the same faceting options that the main site has, but the ability to search for at least a keyword is, uh, I think, uh, enough of an ability to get what you might be looking for on the site. It's important for us to, to have those sort of full features and not relegate you to an experience that's just the most new content. Um, we also took from our inspiration, and this is probably uh, the big one for us. That's not it. That's the CBC, so Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, has a light site. And this, uh, this really was an eye-opener for us. This is where we stole the idea, we outright stole it, the <laughs> idea of, uh, of loading the image onto the page um, so that you can have the sort of a, an enhanced browsing experience a la carte as you go through. Uh, we had a chance to talk to uh, the, the project manager of, this, of, of the CBC website, and he was uh, enormously helpful in, in letting us know what kind, of, uh, what kind of, of dragons might be lurking beneath the surface or up in the clouds. Um, so, how do we do it? Uh, we thought about a couple different ways when we were going about it. The first, and maybe with a, where we went originally was to build a decoupled web app. Uh, it's a technology that's been in Drupal for a long time to be able to go headless. Uh, Drupal can do these, can, can uh, expose an API relatively, relatively easily. Uh, and the, the front end frameworks that are available to, to actually build your web app are, are pretty robust. We looked at Next.js and React. We also looked at a solution called astro.build. These are uh, both frameworks that use server-side rendering, uh, which would allow us to deliver really, really fast pages with pretty, pretty low uh, payloads. Uh, and this was really appealing to us for a couple reasons. It's a fresh start. Like, you don't, because it's decoupled, you can work in a t an entirely new code base. There's, no, there's nothing that's built for you, which means that you can start from green fields. Uh, and that happens so rarely in an organization where you've been carrying a, like a 15-year-old Drupal monolith forward from Drupal 5 to the present, right? Uh, the ability to start fresh on a project is really, really appealing to a lot of developers. There's also just the, the regular reasons why you might consider a decoupled site. There's less risk of side effects when you are building something that is decoupled. Um, you know, breakages that might happen on the main site. As long as your, you know, your services have, have guarantees of, of how they're being used, uh, you have good testing in place, uh, you're uh, unlikely to break things on the text-only site, the decoupled web app, and vice versa. Um, the other possibility that we looked at was to build a separate Drupal theme, totally different Drupal theme, not inheriting from the main site, starting with a fresh Drupal theme, and then build a theme negotiator in a module that can look at the URL. See, is it techstudy.w.org? Yes, send you to, or render this site in the text-only theme. And uh, this, uh, this was really, I think, the thing that, uh, that got us really going here, because we get so many things for free just from Drupal without even, without even writing any bit of code. We get routing for free. Uh, the ability to just like, when you, when you go to a path, know, having a, an application know what you mean to get when you go to that path and not have to build any extra code to determine whether or not you can access that page or uh, what, how, how that path is supposed to be rendered. That's, uh, that's really, that was really enticing for us. Also, the idea that we get language negotiation out of the box. All the things that we build on top of Drupal to make language negotiation happen uh, seamlessly on our site, we didn't have to rebuild those on a text-only site. That just happens. We just sort of put the block on the page. Um, we have embedded media pretty extensively throughout all of our body fields. And embedded media handling is, uh, that just happens in the text-only site again. We can, uh, have that happen, and it, 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 in the text-only site, we have that doing that, that loadable interface where you can hit the button and it loads in, but if we were doing it on a decoupled site, we'd have to be able to find the, the tag that represents that embedded media. We'd have to load that embedded media separately, insert it into the body. There's handling that has to be done. Those are solvable problems. They're just not problems we really uh, wanted to solve. Uh, we also didn't really want to expose the JSON API or GraphQL. We don't have those APIs exposed currently, and it felt like maybe we didn't want to expose the API for only this single use case. If we maybe had other reasons to use the API for other applications, that we might have, we might have thought about this project a lot differently. But for us, um, it didn't make a lot of sense. So this is where we went. We went with uh, a separate Drupal theme. It's all built in Drupal. It's all being handled by Drupal. We benefit from Drupal's caching layer. Um, we benefit from all the, the goodies that we already get from our favorite content management system framework. So how long did it take? Uh, so we thought about it for a year. Uh, it, uh, it grinded in my head all the gears late at night for a year uh, without me getting to do anything. And when we finally decided, yes, let's do it, 
The prototype took two days. <laughs> Super fast. Uh, I have no idea how much of that had to do with the grinding in my head, but when I was just ready to go, I even got a nap in. It was fine. Uh, the polish is ongoing, but the, be, the, the ability to get a text-only site that, that was uh, showing 98% of the content on the page and just like in lickety split was a, a really uh, was a really empowering experience. And again, I interpreted that entirely to the things that we get for free from Drupal. Uh, did it hurt? Uh, yeah, it hurt a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. There are, are, are things that uh, that we encountered uh, that uh, that we weren't expecting. Even though I've been thinking about it for a year, when you get into the practice of it, there are always going to be uh, things that surprise you, especially for a site like Human Rights Watches that's been around since 2008. Um, so, the first thing that really hit us, and this was immediately, was entity view modes, right? So, the text-only site wants to take the full view mode of our entity, and that's what it wants to display to you. Uh, but the view mode settings that you can set in Drupal, those are global. You can't vary them per theme. When you uh, decide how the fields are displayed, I can't say, like, I want the date field to be displayed uh, like with this format on the main site, but with this format on the theme site. You can't do that very easily because the, the settings for that are, are not uh, something that, that vary. Uh, and Layout Builder is a part of it as well. So like for, for many of our content types, we've taken over the, the main display of the full version of the page, the full view mode, as Layout Builder uh, uh, composed pages, which means they have layout. They have sections of the page. They can have sidebars. They have content in them that is maybe that maybe we shouldn't have been thinking about as being specific to the node content. Maybe we were thinking about them as being specific more to the page content, but because now it's Layout Builder and those are global decisions that are made for the full view mode, we all of a sudden have in the text-only site uh, content that we didn't intend to be there. It's more than just the body of the news item. It's uh, also the, um, the calls to action for donations. It's the um, the, the blocks that, that advertise our newsletter content or other possible things on the site, things that we, we run specifically to, to, we want it specifically for the text-only site to not have those experiences. And it's really hard to tell Layout Builder to not display something. Uh, modifying those things uh, is not, it's possible, it's not the route, the route that we decided to go down. How we decided to solve this um, was to make a new text-only view mode. Uh, and then we used an alter in, uh, in our theme file. So whenever the, the theme encounters a piece of content in the full view mode, uh, we switch it instead to the text-only view mode. That lets us um, configure a separate view mode that doesn't use Layout Builder, that, uses, um, that renders fields in the way that we want them to, and then those get sent to our text-only uh, Twig files in the format that we need to. We don't have to do any um, unholy uh, transformations within, within Twig in order to get them to display the way we want them to. Um, so, other thing that hurt us, JavaScript that comes from modules. Uh, and uh, for us, that, that's like easily over 100K of, of uh, unwanted JavaScript and things like, um, you know, widgets that, that change your, your uh, select widgets to nice JavaScript widgets or uh, JavaScript that loads like uh, things from YouTube or jQuery, just like the whole weight of jQuery. We didn't need jQuery. We don't like it. Don't want it. Uh, and uh, it's really hard to get rid of module JS as well. Like from the theme layer, you can get rid of, like the theme uses its own JavaScript. It's, it's a very lightweight uh, system of JavaScript that we have in the theme, but when we want to get rid of things in the module, we do have some options. So I didn't know about this in, in advance, but when we were looking at it, in the info.yaml file, you can actually override any library in the, in the system, including module uh, libraries. There's a library overrides key, so you can tell it, like, um, for the minimal share library, you can say minimal share uh, and just set it to false. And that library just suddenly just doesn't exist. It's an empty library. And so you can just blank out libraries that, uh, that you don't want. So in our case, we just blanked out everything. Um, in order to make that more robust for, for the future going forward, we also went into hook page attachment to alter, which is the step after all of the libraries are compiled and they're uh, available in the, in the build array. And we just said, uh, that's gone. And then uh, we had an allow list of just the libraries that we wanted, and we said, okay, if you're on the allow list of libraries that we know we want, you can stay, but everything else goes. So the combination of those two keys allowed us to get our JavaScript down to just a few kilobytes on the page. Um, what else here? Oh, analytics collection. So we use Matomo. If you were in my uh, in in the the Birds of a Feather session that I had yesterday, you heard me uh, vetch about. 
our analytics collection, one of the things that I didn't say there is that I think our, our Matomo uh, uh, collection script is like something like 150 kilobytes. Uh, that's that's a different uh, a different animal I'd tackle at another time. Uh, but it's huge, and we didn't want it. We didn't want the weight the, of, of the collection interface on, on CPUs, but we still wanted to be able to record when somebody visited a text-only page. Um, what we decided to do was get rid of the collection JavaScript and just use the counter pixel instead. So the no script option, the, the option that, that you would have if you didn't have JavaScript loaded, but you still wanted to be able to track the, um, that, the, that an event happened. We use the counter pixel to send the page view event to our analytics backend. And it doesn't have the full features of the full collection script, but it has enough of the things that we need. And so that, that collection script loads virtually no, no extra JavaScript or no extra page weight. Um, to uh, to our uh, our application. Um, another thing that uh, that hurt us a bit was uh, absolute URLs, and uh, so we have we have uh, dozens of editors uh, over and and more if you count the ones that have that have left over time. Uh, they they don't always have the the wherewithal or the time to do things like strip out the absolute domains from the URLs when they want to do deep internal linking to other pieces. And we do that extensively. We link back to our own work extensively, which is an SEO best practice, but also just a findability best practice. Um, a lot of times, those links were direct links back to the WWW experience. So you'd click from the text-only site on a link, and you'd suddenly be out of your text-only experience loading a two megabyte page again. Um, there are modules in the Drupal ecosystem that will help you deal with this. Uh, the one that I, I remember using like way back in the day was something called Pathologic, which is an alpha right now for Drupal 9 and 10. We didn't necessarily want to go that route. We didn't feel like it was necessary to add that kind of module weight. So instead, what we did was in the theme file, we uh, put uh, a string replacement in a field preprocess function. So template, preprocess, field body, and then string replace there for anything that was www.hrw.org into text.hrw.org, um, which is a little bit of a kludge, but it works out for us uh, with, with minimal extra effort. Um, another thing, there's no separate access control, and this is maybe a good thing in terms of us not having to build things. It's a bad thing in terms of that every page that is available on the main website is technically available on text.hrw.org. And it's not extremely hard to browse through text.hrw.org and then find a page that is very much obviously not built for, for you to see. Uh, that, uh, that's too bad, but you know, if you find it, if you're the first person to find it and, uh, and, and come to me, I'll give you a prize today. Um, the solution for that was, eh. We're working on it. It's ongoing. It's a uh, it's a project in progress. And if you find something that appears to be broken, that's that's okay. Um, that's that's the the pace of web development as it is right now. Most of the site, uh, the all the content that we want to be there is available. Uh, and if things that we don't want you to see in the text only version are also available, um, that's okay. We'd rather that you are able to see uh, more of our reporting than less of our reporting. Uh, but we're working on it. Um, all right, can you? You absolutely can. Uh, with some caveats, I think uh, it would be, you should consider, if you're doing this yourself, you should consider whether or not a decoupled option works for you. For all the reasons that, that you might want to do it anyway, um, such as the, just the, 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 the risk of side effects, um, the ability to develop from scratch, the ability to have, um, you know, to, to you know, uh, hire from the, the huge stable of, of React and Next.js developers that are available, um, th there's, there's a lot of good reasons why you'd want to do this, um, especially if you don't have some of the challenges that we had, including like language negotiation, or if you have um, simpler content or, or a younger site, there's a lot of reasons why a decoupled solution still makes sense. But if you're interested in doing what we did, I am working on a Drupal base theme. You should come see me after class. Um, I don't have anything right yet. I don't have a lot of experience working in base themes, so if anybody here does, uh, or, has, uh, uh, or has opinions about working with child themes of base themes, uh, you should also come see me. Um, you know what, that's all I got. We're at 10.30. I'd love to answer any questions if you haven't. Yeah? Was it worth it? Uh, did, what did your users think? And did you get it? Yeah. Did you get people using it? That's a good question. So this is still relatively new. It's it's like literally I think two or three weeks old. So uh, our analytics collection is telling us that uh, that we have that we've gotten about two thousand hits to the text only site right now. 
Um, which is sort of a, it's not, it's not a lot uh, compared to like our regular content, but also we haven't told anybody about it. I was going to say, how do they discover it? <laughs> yeah, so, so another good question. We had a lot of discussions about that. Right now, there's only, uh, the only thing that we have uh, that lets people know about it, I just close the tab, it is this link in the footer, text, text version. So it's just the people that have been organically finding it by going to the footer and clicking the text version that have done this. Um, anecdotally, I can tell you that, that we, we do see returning users uh, that, are, that, are, that are coming back to just the text-only version to do their browsing. Not a lot, but a few. Um, but uh, we have plans uh, to, to publicize this a little better. Uh, we plan to write a news release that might actually be a story on the site itself just to tell people that it's an option that's available to them so that there's more, there's more awareness of the project. Um, there are uh, uh, dispatches that we, we send in newsletters. We have email newsletters that go out to, to specific populations, so we have plans to tell people about that about this then. But right now, we're in very much a, let's let's see what people are doing with it first of all. Um, and the the analytics collection is pretty good. You know, when we talked to the the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation guy, he uh, he told us that when they launched, they they got very very little uptick on on users of that site originally uh, until. Uh, until the wildfires started for them, and uh, they were having, they were experiencing uh, problems in, in network latency and bandwidth, and uh, problems in with uh, with especially their dial-up users in in the far northern reaches, who uh, all of a sudden, like by word of mouth, they realized, oh, I can get all of the the, the news and the updates that I, I want from my news source, um, you know, a lot easier, a lot more reliably, uh, when when you know when things are, are not as good with my connection. Uh, and that's when they experienced real uptick. Um, we don't have anything quite like that. Our, our, our audiences aren't, aren't quite built that way. Um, but we're, we're expecting to see more uptake as, uh, as, uh, as things happen yeah, around I the world. Have some new audiences for you. That's the hope, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Les. This is awesome. Did, did you ever look at other themes? And I'm not, I don't use themes much, but like, it, it, may be, it makes me wonder if like the Zen theme just gives you like, did you look at something like that and say, oh, that just gives us way too much stuff we don't need? Exactly, yeah. So I uh, did a, just a quick survey of basins. First, I just wanted to see if there was a basin that was already doing this. Uh, and I didn't find anything at all. Um, I did find some very simple base themes, but again, it was just like, I don't. I don't want anything that's very opinionated. I just want to do. Uh, I just want to take the image.html.twig file and say like, uh, don't show the image, just show the alt text. That's really the the level of intervention that I wanted out of a base theme. And I didn't see that. And this was before like I, we had the idea of that loadable image thing that was going in there. Uh, so so it, it it very much was originally we can do this faster. By, by going with a, with a totally new Greenfield theme and not inheriting from anybody else's biases. Uh, I don't know exactly how that's going to shape out when I try to build a base theme for other people as well. That's why I'd sort of like to talk to other people who are interested in the same space. Yeah, Dan? Hey, um, did you, I don't know if you were able to do any research about people, users that most benefit from this and do they today like rely on things like RSS feeds for light versions of information instead of this approach? Uh, very little. So uh, the, my ability to like poll and survey actual users right. is, is pretty pretty limited. The anecdotal data that I was looking at was that there there are there have been tools over the last decade that have been like uh, proxies basically. So Google operated a proxy where you could. Um, browse through their proxy, and their proxy would, would browse the site for you, strip out a bunch of stuff, and give you like a smaller version of that, of that page. Uh, that service went away, I think, in 2021. Um, I, there might be others as well, uh, but I think that the, the calculation that I think a lot of these companies are making is that um, you know, the mobile penetration is getting better, networks are getting better, so it, it's not worth the cost for us to do this anymore. Uh, so I think proxy services are, are, that, that do that are, are going away. As far as RSS goes, I, I really honestly have no idea. That's a good question. When we do operate some RSS feeds, we have an app that uses RSS, for example, to, uh, to put things into uh, a native app. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I, don't, I don't know any I mean, of the numbers particularly there. Historically, I think RSS feeds have been very rarely utilized by 
Yeah. The vast majority of people, and so. I, I might be the only one. You and me are yeah. we the only ones? And so I yeah. wonder not to okay. knock what you've done here. There's like, like if the, that would have the same. If people, there's a appetite for that yeah. kind of. I think RSS is a good start. It's, it's also like, so RSS is, is the very simple out the door solution for it. That's great. We did want a browsable solution, right? I want you to be able to go from a text only article, see the links at the bottom that go to the related countries with related topics, or to be able to search for the site. Okay. I wanted, you know, the experience of the website and not just the article. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Two part question. A, uh, what are your. Um mobile page speed metrics for the two sites, if you've looked at those, and how, how much faster is this? So, uh, okay, so the A is, uh, what we, we did page speed, we did page speed insights before and after. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, so the after, we scored 100. We have a, we were, uh, we're a straight 100 across the board. That's, that's really great. That doesn't do anything for us because we're not indexing the site in Google. So, right, it's, it's duplicate content. We want the main site to be indexed and not the text-only site. So it's great that our page scores are 100, but, you know, that's more sort of academic and more of an internal woo-hoo. And that actually answers the second part of my question, which was, um, you know, how would this compare to something generated in 11T or Tome, you know, truly static? Yeah, we have thought about that, too. There's way, just way too much content for Tome. Yeah, yeah we, can't, we can't do that. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know how that would really compare. I think so. There's you're still. You're getting hundreds. It can't get much better. I would imagine. Right. So like, <laughs> it would be. There's still. There's still some. Uh, some page server time that it takes for the server to render a cold cached page, like a, uh, something with that that hasn't been cached before. There's still Drupal's time to compose the page, right? And if we were doing a, a purely static HTML solution, were exported to HTML files like Tome, I mean that'd be blazing fast, right? Uh, we decided that wasn't necessarily important to us. Like if it takes five seconds for, and that's at the, at the, at the worst end of it. If it, take, if it takes five seconds for Drupal to compose a page, uh, that's still a decent experience for somebody who is on a 2G connection, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in, the, in, you know, wherever, in Lebanon, um, to be able to, to get the site. Most of what we're, we're trying to get rid of is the latency in the network connection or the, the amount of time it takes for, and reduce the number of round trips, and reduce the CPU usage as well. So, um, yeah. I'll, I'll finish by saying, if I was in charge, most of the web would look just like this. <laughs> I know, right? There's something about like having that old Lynx browser experience. Yeah. I, I do think that's a, a, a relevant point. Like, if developers might be, a lot of developers might be interested in having sites like this for their own sites. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually use this myself exclusively when I want to browse our content. It's, you know, it's hard to look back at, at everything else. It's my ADHD brain, maybe. Yeah, Yvonne. This is a great list. Um, have you implemented or have you looked at how uh, people who are using the site might be able to get data to you? Have you implemented any forms or any other... Get data. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have a lot of like uh, a lot of forms in terms of collecting information. We do have forms in terms of filtering our our like doing doing filtered searches, for example. So like uh, if you go to, for example, our our page that collects reports. Reports are long form pieces for us, as opposed to news items, which are, are shorter. Um, so we do have uh, you know versions of the filters that are available to us in the main view on the main site. So I can open up the, or I can search for keywords, or I can search for just a year, or I can open up the country drop down here, and, uh, and uh, we can filter for just pieces of Equatorial Guinea. We have some. Uh, so, so yeah, it's a stripped down version, but these are the literal forms that come from the main site. We didn't re-implement these as like text-only forms. They just have some, some additional theming to do like the, the drop downs. So every select element, we, we have something in the theme that takes every select element and runs it through a theme suggestion to wrap it in a detail summary uh, element. Detail summary elements are, by the way, my, my favorite new thing about HTML5. I love them. The, uh, the, uh, the loadables here, um, these loadables are actually details summary elements too. The button here, this is a summary element, and when you click it, uh, the CSS gets that the details block is open and it does a display none on the summary button. So it has the effect of being like a loaded in piece, but it's really just native HTML5. Hmm. 
Uh, any other? My question was about, you said you're um, hiding this from Google. Yeah. Because every page you have on the website has a, a corresponding text page. That's exactly right. So, so you don't get that for duplicate content. Right. Like, we, we, could, we could have uh, made a, like a meta-canonical tag on this page, but really, like, it, it was just, we didn't want these pages to surface in Google at all. We didn't want there to be any risk of being dinged for duplicate content. And it is really, I mean, the, the body, we've made no modifications to the body of the content. It is, for all intents and purposes, the same content. That's how we want to think about it as well. So, yeah, anything else? Please, if you're interested, come see me. Let's talk about what we could do together. Thanks. Why you were you, you, you went to some site that you, you measured the how, how heavy the page was or whatever? At what site was that? Uh, so it's uh, it's the PageSpeed Insights tool. Okay. So if you it's also so it's also the Google Google Lighthouse is something that that is available in Chrome already. It's in Chrome Developer Tools. So if you have Chrome, you already have Lighthouse. PageSpeed Insights is basically just a, a an amped up version of Google so, Lighthouse. Okay. Is so that actually paid for? Or do, or it's, or it's free. free. Totally free for, for everyone on the web. Page free. It's page PageSpeed page Insights. Insights. Yeah, I can show you what that looks like yeah. if you want to see it. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, so let's go. Oh, there's my, uh, my mouse. I'm just going to unplug 